And we know it would have been different if they were black. And that's part of the poison that's in this country right now. Let me get right. to Jim Acosta. I'm going to need yep. you guys, though, because I think there's going to be some reporting coming out of him that we have to analyze. That's part of the poison coming out of this country. Has anybody ever been on CNN, on Chris Cuomo's show, and said to Chris, you have any evidence of this? What is your proof? This is Malika Andrews, ESPN. I know you spoke to some other players around the league. What was the one message that stood out most? Well, the, the thing that I kept, the sentiment that I kept hearing over and over again from players, from coaches, Doc Rivers said it so eloquently, was that players were wondering if these folks that showed up today to storm into the U.S. Capitol, why were they treated the way they were when Black Lives Matter protests, protesters were treated differently? In some cases, in protests that they participated in, that NBA players participated in back in the spring, they couldn't help but notice the dichotomy between those two things. Doc Rivers said it so eloquently, just noticing the difference between the way white and black people, the way white and brown people in this country continue to be treated, particularly when it comes to protests, whether those protests are violent or not. That is the message that I kept hearing from NBA players that they were puzzling over and thinking about. And when you look towards Milwaukee, their message was multi-layered. Yes, they were thinking of what happened in the Capitol, but also what happened in Kenosha yesterday, where the police officers, the law enforcement officers involved in the shooting of Jacob Blake were not, that we heard the DA said that they will not be facing any charges. The Bucks chose to kneel for seven seconds on each side of the ball, representative of those seven shots that were in Jacob Blake's back. And so there are layers to what is going on for players here today, Stan. All right, Malika Andrews. And no one would even suggest what she said is dangerous, what she said is divisive. Never mind, of course, completely false. Where are the class action lawsuits against all these police departments if they're engaging in systemic racism? There are a bunch of civil rights lawyers, no shortage of them. Where are the lawsuits? Out here in L.A. for something like 20, 25 years, activists demand that the police record traffic stops by race. That is to say, write down the race of the person they stop in traffic stops. The LAPD initially was, was re reluctant, not because they didn't want people to find out how racist they were, because more work. But they did it. And most big cities now do that. So we've had now decades of data about the people who are stopped in traffic stops and their race. Where's the lawsuit? After all, the data is supposed to show a pattern of abuse against black motorists. Where is it? During the Obama administration, during the year 2013, if I'm not mistaken, the National Institutes of Justice, which is the research arm of the DOJ, came out with a study about race and traffic stops. And yes, black motorists were disproportionately stopped compared to white motorists. Also found out black motorists were disproportionately more likely to violate the, the law than white motorists. More likely to speed, more likely to drive without a license, more likely to drive without uh, seatbelts on, more likely to drive without the proper uh, car seat for a baby in the back, and so forth. That's why they were stopped. And the DOJ, NIJ report found that the reason for the disproportionate amount of stops was for, quote, legitimate variables, end of quote. That's the truth. So who's being divisive? 